metropolis and a poverty colony. In this sense, the South African experiment it's not so much unique or exceptional, but a laboratory of humanity as it seeks to address universal challenges which revolve around race, class, and gender. The efforts to reverse this historical injustice, to create an antithesis of internal colonialism, is South Africa's civilizing of the current age. Pro program director, for the sake of completeness, let us briefly characterize the global environment in which South Africa's efforts of social change manifest today. We are a small open economy, and many of the country's fund, fund, economic fundamentals are influenced as much by developments in other parts of the world as they are by perceptions among global economic actors of the dynamics in our political economy. Like other countries, South Africa today has to navigate the changing global power balances and ensuing geopolitical tensions, especially in relation to China. While change in leadership in the United States may moderate the tone of engagement, most analysts believe that uh, the strategic posture of intense rivalry, the so-called Asia pivot, is bound to continue. The global market system is in poly crisis with multiple challenges, slow economic growth, debilitating identity politics, growing inequality, and so on. The level of strategic acumen amongst the leadership leaves much to be desired. And in the sciences, hyper-specialization, ideological partisanship, and reliance on standard fare constrict spaces for creative transdisciplinary thought. It would seem that some leaders of global corporations have keenly sensed this danger, and to quote one of them, the Rothschild, faith in market institutions has rarely been lower. Markets mostly encourage a near maniacal focus on short-term financial results tolerance of disparities of opportunity, and an apparent disregard for the common good. If these tendencies are left unchecked, she concludes, the public cannot be expected to show faith in capitalism. These difficulties have been worsened by COVID-19, and this would include the crippling debt, which is facing many de de developing countries. And the fact that, according to Oxfam, 32 of the world's companies stand to see their profits jump by 109 billion US dollars more in 2020. And the fact that the reversal in reducing poverty will be delayed by at least three years. That's as a result of COVID-19. One of the deficits is the allocation of research resources and poor attention to long-term foresight studies. In this context, many have challenged the characterization of COVID-19 as an extreme, extremely rare black swan event. Rather, they argue that it is a gray rhino event, a highly probable, high impact, yet neglected threat, as gray rhinos are random surprises 
but okay after a series of warnings and visible evidence. Now, all this critique may sound too harsh, but it is well deserved because today the current civilization seems to be rising to the occasion, at least at the level of vaccines. This is through transdisciplinary undertakings, not just medical science, which includes nanotechnology, microbiology, genetics, artificial intelligence, and even engineering. The RNA-based vaccines hold much promise as a new drug class that may stand humanity in good stead, even beyond coronavirus. What about South Africa's uh, trajectory going forward? Now, to recapitulate, South Africa combines the attributes of both an erstwhile metropolis and a colony. The attainment of the ultimate constitutional objective should result in the emergence of a new and unique civilization. The changes, particularly at the level of the political superstructure, had to be immediate with brief transitional mechanisms. The socio-economic changes can only take place progressively. We can use many measures to assess the advancement of people's quality of life. Let me just use uh, social demographics just for purposes of illustration. Africans are still overrepresented among the chronically poor. But the African middle class expanded from about 17% of the total in 1993 to 47% in 2008 and 64% in 2017. The elite in the highest income category are more homogeneously white, although the African proportion of this category had grown to about 22% by 2017. In tertiary education, like here in the University of Johannesburg, enrolled students have almost doubled since 1994. And whilst African students were less than half then, today they make up about 71% of the student population. Now we can engage in detailed technical number crunching. That is important, but it does little to explicate the fundamental issues about the fate of a civilization. We can periodize and outline recent embarrassing weaknesses, such as declining state capacity, as well as state capture, while this may solve a conscience and allow us to let off steam, it does not clarify the more fundamental issues. What is required is an understanding of the philosophical underpinning to the transformation project as a civilizing mission. I'll outline just four strategic trends in this regard. The first one, is on the quality of economic growth. South Africa's industrial development is still skewed to the highly developed minerals and energy complex with weak links to other industries domestically. Our exports have grown, but by less than 10%, those of Botswana, Brazil, Malaysia, and Mexico. Besides this dependency, we have got high levels of monopolization, resulting in high markups in the product market. At the same time, black entrepreneurial impulses were decimated under colonialism, and we remain with a low entrepreneurial activity index. From the point of view of productive forces, 
can South Africa's national democracy point to decisive interventions since 1994 that are both prominent and epoch-making? Of course, to answer this question, we would need to do a proper audit and we'll find some successes. But we will also find a large graveyard where innovations go to die. And so there is a sense... There was the executive director of the Mapungube Institute for Strategic Relations, that of course being Joel Nchitenze, delivering this year's lecture under the theme Can South Africa's Civilization of National Democracy Sustain Itself? Unfortunately, we're going to have to cut out of that right now. We go to a quick break. When you come back at the top of the hour, we'll have more news for you as we, in the home stretch of today's SA Today. Stay with us. You're watching SABC News.